Okay, this is the Singer Model 6618. And I can only think of one other time where we've come across one of these machines. In my opinion, they're fairly rare. And particularly this one, which was born back in the 1930s, specifically May 26, 1936. And this really is, in my opinion, an improvement on the Singer Featherweight from a standpoint of uh, how it releases that power. It has the same size motor as the Singer Featherweight, but because of a drive shaft system through here that turns in a turbine fashion that really maximizes the output of that power, uh, it really, really drives home heavy duty sewing as well. And also I like this matte finish on it as well. It's just a classy, classy look. Okay, let's start down here on the bottom right hand side right above where the serial number is and where this gorgeous crest is. Winding a bobbin on this machine is very simple. Uh, you would simply put your thread on top, you'd come across the machine uh, through this thread guide and then back down here through this thread tension control area here and then up to the bobbin. And then you'd simply rotate it up to the hand wheel like so and simply engage uh, the, the foot control once you've disengaged the clutch. And I'll go ahead and just step on this just so you can see uh, that wheel turning. Listen to how, I mean, whisper quiet that motor is. Uh, we did our normal normal service on that motor and it is, oh, it just runs, just runs, runs beautifully. All right, go and cut that off. And then obviously once that bobbin is wound, you simply rotate this back down again so it's out of the way. Okay, right here to the left, obviously this is a control center for stitch length. And this Singer 6618 has a very wide stitch length uh, variation. Anything from six stitches per inch all the way down to 30 stitches per inch. And let me show you an example of an applique that we did that really demonstrates the full scope of that stitch variation for stitch length. On the outer border here you can see that we're pretty close to that six to eight stitches per inch. But as we move in and around this outline of uh, this flower type character, you can see that we've reduced that stitch length very, very close to that 30 stitches per inch. But the final result I think is just a spectacular representation of what a quality straight stitch machine can generate like this 6618 uh, with just a little creative spark. And as I've said numerous times, whether you're a novice sewer or an experienced sewer, because of the quality and the caliber of this machine, you are just as capable of generating a quality project like this with just a little bit of effort. And, uh, and it'll be spectacular. Okay, let me get this to the side. All right, back to the machine again. We've already talked about the stitch length control area. Uh, let's go to the top of the machine. You can see that we have a single spool pin, but as I've said numerous times, because of the technology advances of uh, uh, over under needle uh, and also oversized needle holes for th uh, threading the, the thread through, uh, even though when this machine was born back in the 1930s, it wasn't designed with the idea of dual needle sewing, it does have the capacity to do that with the right uh, uh, technology application of needles. So just something to know and um, it, it just opens up uh, I think even more creative options to what you can do with a great machine like this. Okay, threading the machine, coming away from this spool pin here, coming across the body of the machine, we come through this single thread guide, down through this very cool tension control area, I say cool because I like the fact that you can see the, the tension discs and when I disassembled this and cleaned it thoroughly, boy oh boy, it's amazing over the years of use uh, how much had collected in there, but boy is it ready to go to work for you now. And after you come through that tension control area, you come up through this single thread bar guide here, up to the arm, and then all the way down to the presser foot. And you can see with my finger right here that I have that finger almost completely underneath that uh, presser foot. And if I just slightly rotate that needle up, I'm going to bring it up just slightly, there we go. 
Um, I'm also going to show you that beyond that, it also has a modest hyperextension as well, which gives you even more clearance capability for those thicker materials and also if you're looking at putting additional quilt batting underneath there as well. Another nice feature on this 6618 is it also has, if I just slide this plate open, it also has a very, very convenient drop-in bobbin as well. So it's, it's such a nice feature, I think, just because it gives you that much more ease in changing out the bobbin if you need to, uh, you know, if the thread's running low or if you're wanting to simply change out the bobbin color thread as well. I don't know if the camera's able to get a shot, but I often talk about certain machines, they are just envy packages when it comes to taking them to a quilting class or uh, to a sewing class. This has that spectacular uh, scroll type uh, face plate. I'm going to carefully try to rotate it around just far enough so the camera can get a glimpse of it. And you can see also that is part of the threading as well. Uh, I didn't point that out uh, when I actually walked you through the threading, but it does come across that uh, ornate uh, scrolling type face plate as well before it gets down to the needle. And that's all covered in the manual as well too, so uh, don't concern yourself with that. Also, if you, if you need to access underneath the face plate, it's so easy to do with simply uh, unscrewing uh, this thumb screw here, and then that plate simply lifts up uh, for purposes of blowing out lint if you're working with certain fabrics that generate a lot of lint or also when that routine maintenance comes due where you want to lubricate certain points in there that are shown uh, in the instruction manual. And speaking of the instruction manual, uh, as we often try to do, uh, we love to include an instruction manual with a machine for two purposes. One, it's going to help you to maximize that machine and answer questions that might come up even though I think this 6618 is so simple to operate, you might encounter something and the book will guide you to that answer very quickly. It's also going to accomplish uh, that routine maintenance factor that will come uh, sometime after uh, you've won this machine. Now when you initially get this machine, don't worry about that. We spent about 10 hours on this machine. It is ready to go to work. It's been lubricated and cleaned and conditioned and is just as close to factory standard as, as we possibly could get it. So, uh, But when that routine maintenance does come due, this Singer uh, manual will guide you through the very simple steps of maintaining this incredible machine at the optimal sewing level that you'll receive it in. Now, if this is, isn't enough uh, to entice your interest in bidding on this magnificent machine, let me show you something else we're going to throw in for just fun. Uh, many of you like using uh, flosses, but oftentimes it's a question of where are you gonna, where are you gonna store those flosses? Well, we're gonna include, and I know it's kind of tough for the camera to capture it, but we're gonna include two containers like this made by Create. Um, I think they normally retail for around thirty dollars each. Uh, it has a nice hinge uh, type mechanism that allows you to snap it shut when you don't need it convenient little carrying handle as well and we're going to be including uh, this one and then we also have uh, this blue one uh, as well going with it just as a fun little bonus so uh, make sure you check out our other videos as well where we will demonstrate the heavy-duty side of this incredible Singer 6618